Well, joining our discussion now is Reverend Jane Shaw. Reverend Shaw has worked in Pakistan. She returned from there last September. Now, I know, Reverend Shaw, you haven't been able to listen to the other parts of our discussion, but we want to bring you in to get your reactions, first of all, to the news this week. Well, it was um, quite a, a shock and surprise. I mean, I know Abbottabad quite well. Uh, I've been there several times. Um, I've lived nearby for a while. And I thought, this is a relatively small community and a very heavily militarized cantonment. Uh, it seemed very surprising that anybody could live there without the security forces being well aware. So that slightly surprised me. Give me an idea of life in Pakistan, because it's something we've discussed on this program before. Is, mm. is it a state where there is no law, for instance? Because we seem to hear more and more about people being executed, being killed for, for, for minor things. I'm not talking about uh, bin Laden now. I'm talking about things that's gone on there in, in recent months. Oh, no, there is law. There is a good legal system actually based still on the old British framework, uh, pre-1947, um, moderated to be in line with Sharia law. Uh, there is police, there are courts, there are judges. Uh, the whole legal system is there. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily work as well as it does in a Western country because there is a lot of corruption and, and things you know, go wrong. What did you make of the way the Americans, some Americans, celebrated the death of bin Laden? Humanly, I understand it very well. They've been through terrible traumas. Uh, they've been led to attribute this to this one man, and now the one man has been removed. Um, so there would be naturally the sort of rejoicing that our parents might have felt when Hitler died. Um, you know, the, the figurehead is very critical to people's understanding. Um, I was taken aback, I think, by the manner of his death. Um, it seemed very summary execution. And I was impressed by a speaker on Thought for the Day last week who said that you know, after the last World War, uh, justice was moderated through the Nuremberg trials. Mm. There was evidence, there were witnesses, there was a judgment. Um, but a gunshot at four o'clock in the morning is, well, it's almost more like terrorist activity. And there's been a lot of discussion, and I want to bring Mohammed in on this one, first of all, please, mm. um, about the way in which he was buried. What, what were your thoughts on that? I can understand the reasons for doing it, and basically I support them. If Ben Darden had been buried on the ground, his tomb would have become a shrine to the people who think like he does. As it was, I, he was treat, his body was treated the Muslim way. It may well have been actually prepared by Muslims. There are many Muslims who serve in the American armed forces. And I'm sure the Americans are quite capable of getting some to help prepare the body and then bury it at sea. This way, there will never, ever be a shrine to bin Laden. Reverend Jane? Well, I suspect there will be a shrine to bin Laden because people create shrines wherever and there may even be one in Abbottabad quite soon. Um, but uh, in terms of the way in which his death was, you know, his burial was executed, uh, I see that that, that will cause some unease and offence among some strict Muslims. Um, and that, that maybe just goes with the package, you know, that's something that with the other outrage and the other offence, it becomes part of the part of the story. There seems to have been lots of discussion as to how Bin Laden was able to stay in, effectively, a city in Pakistan for this length of time without being spotted, without getting caught. Are we wrong to blame the people of Pakistan? Oh, yes, I don't think the people of Pakistan come into it necessarily. Um, now, I was surprised, and I wonder whether the security forces did actually know who the guest was. I, I'm sure the house is in the name of one of the tribal chiefs, and so his name doesn't appear. But they have a pretty shrewd idea who comes and goes. But I don't think, I mean, that is a matter for the security forces. And really, the military in Pakistan are almost a, a parallel universe. Um, the, they interact occasionally with the ordinary population, 
but uh, I don't think the people of Pakistan can be blamed. They're more the victims, really. Another big discussion point in the week has been the photographs. Uh, Rabbi, first of all, your thoughts on that and should the photos be released? I don't think so. I don't think people need to witness the dead body. We, if we want to accept we're living in a Western democracy where we have to have some sense of we trust and we believe heads of government, heads of state, and I think being told that he's been killed, we have to accept that. Um, conspiracy theories will always question the truth of a photograph anyway. And I think it's just, again, it's that sense of bloodlust that many people seem to want to, to, to revel in rather than the, the truth of, of the death of, of uh, an enemy of most of the world. Reverend Haley Matthews. Yeah, I would agree, actually. It's, it is the whole bloodlust and YouTube videos and that kind of culture. Um, it's not really appropriate, is it, for something of this stature? Al-Qaeda has already put out a statement accepting that bin Laden was killed. Mm. It, took, it took a few days for them to do that. It did, but they put it out. Publishing photographs will not actually convince those people who still think he's alive. People still think Elvis Presley is alive. <laughs> <laughs> so there's nothing to be gained by publishing the photos. It will uh, make more people angry. And therefore, I think Obama has made the right decision. I would encourage him to stick to it. Reverend Jane? Well, it was funny. I used to joke in Pakistan that people didn't believe something had happened until they had the photograph of it. You know, birthday parties, weddings, whatever. Mm. Um, they were insistent the photographs had to be taken. And it was almost what made the event real. So maybe that's a local cultural thing. But on the general principle, I would agree with the previous speakers. And what do you think is going to happen now? Where does this story go? Well, I pray that it won't cause more backlash, more outrage, particularly against the Christians of Pakistan, who always seem to be vulnerable to um, revenge attacks. Um, so I will pray that it just becomes part of the ongoing series of events and doesn't cause further trouble. Well, Reverend Jane Shaw, uh, only female Anglican vicar to have worked in Pakistan, can I thank you very much indeed for taking part in our discussion this morning. Thank you. I've enjoyed it. Thank you. And my guests here in the studio were Rabbi Benji Rickman, Mohammed Amin and Reverend Haley Matthews. We're right out of time. I will take one of you, please. Where do you think the story is going to go from here? I think the high tide of Islamically motivated extremism has gone. The Arab Spring that we've seen in Tunisia, in Egypt, what we're seeing in Libya, what we're seeing in Syria, means that the whole story has moved on. And I think in 20 years' time, we'll look back at a period of religiously motivated extremism and we will say, thank God it's over. But what's going on in the in the Arab Spring? That's going to bring a different kind of government to those areas, isn't it? Yes, I believe it will bring democratic government to those areas. Well, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you all very much indeed for taking time to be with us uh, on a fascinating discussion. And uh, we we move on.